Uh, thank you, Alex, for uh, joining us on this one-on-one -on -one Q&A section. So, well, this is William from Counterpoint Research. And, uh, well, welcome back to Computex. How are you doing? Thank you, William, for inviting me. Really appreciate it. I'm doing very, very well. Yeah. It's, it's a big few days for us here. Yeah, well, um, this year, um, I guess earlier last month, Microsoft announced kind of uh, uh, Microsoft uh, Copilot Plus PC yeah. and with you um, Qualcomm solution. And um, well, in the past, uh, when we talk about PC industry, people would talk about well, maybe Microsoft Plus Intel, but this time that's different. In Windows 11 update, um, Microsoft talk about Copilot Plus with you with Qualcomm. So, but, but I guess um, not all people are familiar with your um, Qualcomm Snapdragon um, X platform. Could yeah. you well, share with um, us about your um, Qualcomm X platform solution and um, what's the difference between your solution and other um, current existing x86 solutions? Yeah, so uh, we've been working with Microsoft for years now to try to figure out how to have uh, a Snapdragon-based PC be available in the market. And in the past, Two or three years, uh, it's been it's been very very uh, cooperative between the two companies, and and we've uh, virtually integrated from uh, their applications through their OS, through the middleware to the hardware, a vertically integrated solution that is optimized to run uh, Copilot Plus capabilities, and um, you know we we've. Uh, We've kind of uh, co-designed the architecture of the solution together in terms of what type of experiences can be brought to consumers and enterprise workers. And um, the, um, the performance capabilities that we provided to Microsoft and the optimization that we've done and the battery life extensions that we've brought to life for them, so your performance per, per watt or performance per power has been excellent. And, uh, and they've been able to take full advantage of it. And uh, what's different between uh, what we bring versus uh, the regular x86 is extremely high performance at very low power. And if you look at our history, um, we come from mobile. And we, are, we design our solutions to be in a very constrained environment. And every year, we push the performance of that solution higher and higher across multiple cores, CPU, GPU, NPU, DSP, camera, video, audio. And we concentrate on increasing performance every year, but keeping it in the same power envelope and even reducing power year after year. And so we applied all of that learning into the solution that we provide for, for laptops. And it's actually disruptive because, um, you know, we're, we're, Moving forward with the the ARM ISA, which is different than x86, yeah. uh, we bring a very very high performance solution with Snapdragon X Elite at extremely low power, and we concentrated on making an AI core that allowed Microsoft to take full advantage of um, small language models running in the background continuously, yeah. uh, and and providing a user experience that's never been there before in Windows. And so uh, Windows, the Windows 11 Copilot Plus version of the software is fully optimized and, and uh, it's, it's, it, it's fully performant on the Snapdragon X Elite and the, and the subsequent devices. Yeah, talking about um, um, ARM architecture and AI. So um, in the past, maybe in 2020, 2021, when, when people think about ARM architecture, ARM-based PC, people would talk about Apple's MacBook. But this time it's well, Qualcomm, you got uh, Windows on ARM. And um, well, I think um, in AI generation, uh, maybe in, in the upcoming three to five years, what would you think about uh, Windows on ARM um, PCs? I, I think it's gonna become um, more and more popular uh, because I think the, uh, the performance capability of, of uh, devices that, that are formed around uh, the Snapdragon heterogeneous solutions um, are, are ever increasing, again, with full concentration on making sure the power envelope is not wasted. And, and uh, 
you know, we, we don't want to build PCs that have no power constraints. We want to build PCs that are useful every day, yes. that last a long time, that people can carry with them and work from anywhere, uh, and, and allow, allow the user experience to be completely different through UI. And again, the device has to understand you versus you understand your device. It, can, it should be able to do things for you, save your time. Yeah, um, talking about working um, on this ARM-based laptop for the whole day, I, I remember in 2017, 2018, we have been brought this kind of idea, ACPC. And in this time, AI generation, are you, are you going to you know, bring, bring back this idea? Well, uh, okay, let me, let me answer your question two ways. Uh, one is um, the always-on, always-connected PC is very important because you want your work to start immediately as you open up your laptop. And with the Snapdragon solutions, that's fully possible. Second, I think um, we will deploy our Wi-Fi solutions along with the Snapdragon Elite devices continuously. So the Wi-Fi solutions are uh, ever-increasing in capability. Right now, we're talking about Wi-Fi 7 deployment. Yeah. And, and uh, that will give you a very good user experience. Simultaneously, we will have our cellular modem solutions available for integration into the devices as well. And now, when you look at people who have, who have devices that are cellularly connected, they don't have to worry about uh, security of the network. They don't have to worry about logging into something or paying for something. You already, you're already have a subscription available to you. Many, many of those users, once they have a cellular connection, they don't want to go back to just having Wi-Fi. But we leave that choice up to our customers to decide whether the SKUs that they provide has cellular connectivity or not. It's an option for them. Great. So, well, maybe in addition to laptop solution, you got um, X Elite, X Plus. And um, do you also have other well, um, solutions for us, maybe on desktop, maybe on mini PC in the upcoming yeah, very good question. So uh, if, you, if you saw the dev kit that we announced with Microsoft, yeah. that's actually a, a mini PC, basically. And uh, we, we have no constraints as to which form factors we should, we should be designed into. Uh, it just so happens that the laptop has such a large piece of the market. We started there first. But absolutely no constraints about being in, in desktop solutions or mini PC solutions or enterprise-based PCs that are stuck to the, to the display behind, like for example, you see in different shops. Yeah. We can be designed into any of those. And in fact, some of our OEMs are thinking about how to put Xelite in some of those designs. Oh, okay. Well, on the other hand, um, I guess Qualcomm already been uh, dominating the smartphone industry for a long while. And I guess you definitely have a comprehensive uh, maybe product strategy on this one. And uh, well, how do you think about um, the difference between um, your strategy on AI smartphone and AI PC in terms of um, target client or product segmentation? Sure. You know, I think if you look at AI in handsets, it's been around for multiple years. Just people didn't know. Yeah. It was running in the background. So, for example, uh, photography and videography was all assisted via AI, whether in your, in your, in your in sunlight or you're in low light, or if you want to capture a fast moving image, or image stabilization as you move someplace, your hand you know, it moves a little bit and it stabilizes that. All that stuff is AI. Um, the assistant running on the phone, AI-based. Um, malware detection, uh, false network detection, security, all of it was AI-based. But now with generative AI, all that stuff is coming to the foreground. And everyone's looking at a device saying, what type of AI does it have and how how is that assistant able to help me do things faster and better? And so um, that's exactly what's happening in the handset, and it's exactly happening on the PCs. And so we're very, very fortunate that our heritage is from a cellular and mobile background. We can apply all those learnings into the PC environment, which is becoming more mobile. Because, you want, again, you want this device to have all-day battery life, you want it to perform very well. You want to be able to work from anywhere. You want to be able to carry it anywhere with you. And so, therefore, 
it's a it's a great advantage for us to be able to move technology from one market to another and apply it to the second market. Yeah, talk about the mobile platform. Um, yesterday at the keynote, Mr. Cristiano talked about Snapdragon Seamless. Yes. And I guess you got all product lines in terms of um, uh, mobile platform like connectivity or security. So well, how do you think about this and how could it help us to, you know, in this kind of um, mobile convergence? Very good question. So if you, if you think about the number of devices people carry with them, smart devices, okay? Uh, as, as a base, you have a phone. Uh, you most likely have a Bluetooth headset. Uh, maybe you have a smartwatch. Um, you probably have a tablet. You probably have a PC. You go in your car. Uh, and later on, probably um, XR headsets or AR glasses, okay? All of these devices should be aware of each other and be able to pass your functions from one to another seamlessly. Yes. And in fact, uh, we have a, a product called Seamless. Uh, and it is a, uh, a Bluetooth protocol that it's a very low power Bluetooth protocol that allows devices to be contextually aware of each other. So it understands that there's another Snapdragon device near. And what can it share? What can it pass? What computation can it offload? And so um, if, you're, if you have, for example, a phone and a headset and a PC or, 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 a, uh, or a tablet, you should be able to pass applications back and forth between these devices. And the devices should understand that they're working with another device to take the data. And if I have, for example, glasses uh, that I'm going to use with a phone or, or a laptop, I should be able to understand that there's a higher com computa com computational device available for me so I can offload some of the computation there. So we're, we're actually laying that um, protocol out with all of our partners, our OEM partners and our OS partners. And they're realizing that a multi-device environment is actually very good for the consumer. And so we're working with all of our partners to make that happen. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, talking about a lot of um, products, I guess you got you already got a lot of solutions in your mobile platform. And uh, well, I I want to, well ask about do you this time also um, except for the AI smartphone AI PCs do you bring, also bring in some other uh, mobile solutions or IoT solution or automotive solutions? Oh yes. Again, very good question. I think. AI is pervasive among all the devices that you mentioned. Uh, so the phone for sure, the PC is coming around and becoming a, an AI-based smart device. Um, watches are putting in a lot, a lot more AI than they used to before because the, so many sensors are available in the watch to, for your health. Yeah. It has to be able to uh, um, take that data and do something with it useful for you. Uh, even earbuds, um, having, having AI capability in there to be able to figure out what device are they connected to and how, um, high, how high fidelity of a sound or music can you hear. Um, we have uh, uh, cars that are, that are using AI all the time. Um, all of the cameras around the car have to understand what they're looking at. And uh, if it's autonomous driving, it's really based on really based on AI. Um, and then IoT actually takes on what we've done in mobile and other smart device environments and make it applicable to either embedded systems or industrial systems. All of them will have AI capabilities. And so everything that we've done stemming from mobile is now applicable to all these markets and we will have AI across all of them. Yeah, well, well, last question for you. Um, I guess we are already in the AI generation and we are going to move forward. So well, how do you position yourself, I mean, Qualcomm, um, in this AI generation and how could you uh, bring us maybe in the upcoming five years, 10 years? Sure, so if you, if you look at the product lines that we're doing, um, you know, mobile, PC, XR, wearables, hearables, auto, IoT, all of them are edge-based solutions. And like I said, all of them will have our AI technology and our AI capability across them. And we're working with 
the developer community through our AI hub to bring in more and more AI models that are optimized to our, to our hardware. Yes. And so I think uh, what you'll see is uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon solutions becoming the intelligent edge solution provider across all these different markets. And so, so we're, we're kind of positioning ourselves from a communications company to a connected computing company. And becoming a connected computing company across auto, PC, XR, industrial IoT puts us as the, the complete solution provider for Intelligent Edge. Well, thank you, Alex. I appreciate Anytime. your time. Anytime. And uh, well, enjoy your stay in Taiwan. Thank you for your time, William. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.